So I want to rise up on our feet this morning. As you take up your Bible with me. The book of Luke. Chapter 24, verse 36. Also John, chapter 16, verse 33. Luke 24, 36, and John chapter 16, verse 33. I'm going to read from John 16, 33 first. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Luke chapter 24, verse 36. Luke 24, 36. Now, as they said these things, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said to them, Peace to you. Mighty God of heaven, we thank you this morning. The Prince of Peace, the Lord of Lord. We thank you for your personal invitation of yourself to the presence of your children because you said where two or three are gathered there you are in their midst and so Lord we appreciate your word fulfilled right now and we ask as your word is proceeding deep down from the bottom of your heart all the one that came this morning let none be left out Without being touched, without being blessed, without being transformed. Let them experience the special encounter of people forsaking everything else and coming to your presence. Special encounter, special love that you give those who lean on you because their hearts rest on you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we've all declared. Have your seat confidently. Invoke the peace. Invoke the peace. Everybody say that. Confidently. One more time. What is the meaning of peace? We want to pray this morning. And that's the time we have right now to pray and see God's face. But I want to make clarity on certain things regarding this issue of evoking peace so what is peace it is freedom of human spirit from disturbance or trouble there was a disturbance trouble spirit freedom of the spirit of human from disturbance and trouble it also can be said it is tranquility of the heart or of the spirit of human. The tranquility in the earth or the spirit of human. Now we can see that clearly. Jesus understood this very clearly and passed an information to his people, which include us in the book of John chapter 14, verse 1. He said, Let not your heart be troubled you believe in god and believe also in me so god understand that the heart can be troubled all right what are the things that can trouble the heart a time like this where the whole world is talking about a disease that can kill amen the old world is talking about small virus that God allowed to be released. <laughs> Amen. Because the Bible says there's nothing that catches God unaware. Nothing befall a nation without God's awareness. God is aware. God is aware of what happens in darkness. God is aware of what happens in light. God is not ignorant of what he creates and what works therein among what he creates. 
is the orchestration of all things. That cannot be taken away from him. Hallelujah. He is God. He is the creator of the heavens and the heart. And everybody are kind of disturbed, uh, which include us, we are all human. This is not a joke. Uh, praise the Lord. It's not what? It's just like HIV. HIV. Oh, uh, what do you call it? AIDS. Having blood contact, you're going to have a serious problem that can lead to death. And this one is actually, if I will say, it's even more serious. Right now, you're not even going to need to go around it. It comes around with you once somebody is having such affliction. A mere coughing, right? And at about uh, three feet distance, less than that, you can release that into your breathing. And then you can catch such virus. As the World Health Organization is saying, that somebody have such uh, sickness may have gotten contact with the surface that uh, has such virus and they put his finger into his nose or eyes and the virus starts growing in, growing into that body um, depositing sickness we can cause like cough and uh, chest pain and breathing breathing, breathing uh, uh, disability, right? So it, it means that the coronavirus, as we are told, can actually spread rapidly. And then the World Health Organization declared it pandemic, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. When it says something's pandemic, it becomes easily spreading. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's why uh, we say this, before I continue that, that's a normal thing that needs to be done as human. If you go to the restroom, it is normal that you wash your hand, right? And then here there, there's a soap there, or, you know, that you can use to wash your hand there. And as well, there's, I think, right there in the room there, there's also hand sanitizer that two of them provided that you need to use normally. People should just follow normal hygiene to help yourself Eddie. you don't need a bible preacher to preach that on to us we don't need the conviction of the holy spirit to let us know that that we can't eat anyhow we can't just uh, eat with unwashed hands i mean you want to keep healthy that's normal but after we have obeyed all the rules then any other thing that has to do with we running around to be afraid that is not of god hallelujah it's not what? He said, with our naked eyes, we will see the reward of evil doer. He said, evil will not come near our dwelling place. This is not, doesn't mean that we're not human. We are, of course, human. We have limitations. And we can't control what sickness happens to anybody. But I know of God who has the ability to keep in perfect peace the soul of those that rest in him. Hallelujah. Those who are trusted in the Lord. God has a way of not letting things around us to be a threat to our every condition of health. Hallelujah. God has a purpose for things. God is speaking a language. Hallelujah. God is what? Speaking a language. To the whole world. This whole thing started from somewhere. Southern area in China. And it spread all rapidly. All over the world. Is it not a time for us to think deeper and say, okay, now, it is high, high time we get close to God. High time we get close to God. If there's any other time that we need to get close to God, it must be now. Hallelujah. It must be now. If there's any other time to invoke our peace presence we've given, it is now. Hallelujah. We can't be under the siege of fear. Last Sunday we spoke about fear, all type of fear. We can't be under that. It's time for us to invoke the peace that was given to us. Hallelujah. Amen. Peace that was given to us. If God is not caught and aware on this incident spreading around the whole world, this is not a joke. God is always also very aware that he is able to keep his people. 
Amen. Say good to what? And so that's why we need to pray today. We want to pray not because of that virus, but because of the condition of the heart of our, the kingdom, people that are in the kingdom. But we don't want to be driven by fear. Hallelujah. We want to rearrange and sort things out because I'm seeing a big church closing down because of the situation. Big congregation deciding to fold up and they are doing online, online uh, Sunday service. And I begin to think when I was driving this morning, I was begin to think, I think, oh Lord, what is the purpose of church? Because we begin to look at it deeper. We said Jesus went about. Okay? Right? Healing all manner of what? Doing good and healing all manner of sickness and what? Disease. What was his purpose of moving around to achieve those things we've just mentioned? So what is the purpose of the church? We said the power of Jesus is capable of healing and delivering. All right. At the same time, we also know that we cannot tempt God. Hallelujah. We cannot what? I can deliberately go to, uh, I decide not to wash my hands. I decide not to sanitize my, my hand. I just want to do things anyhow. I say, God is going to take care of me. I will be tempting God. But at the same time, I cannot afford to be driven by fear. After washing my hands, after doing what is right, after eating healthy food, after washing my clothes very well thoroughly, after washing my body thoroughly, hallelujah, after doing what I ought to do, then I cannot be driven by fear. If that is the case, that we need to be driven by fear, then the church has lost its purpose. Hallelujah. That means that we all, the whole world is going to be consumed very, 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 very soon. All men are all, all human are going to all die. Hallelujah. That means God is no longer existent. His word is not true. Hallelujah. The judgment is not now. This is not what the scripture says that when Christ is coming, a virus shall be sent to the whole world and everybody will die and Christ will come and make the dead people. Hallelujah. This is not what the Bible says that the preaching of the gospel is to the dead. They will be attacked by virus and will be going around and will be preaching to the dead people. That's not what we are told. But we for sure know in the book of Matthew 24 that to the sign of the coming of Christ will be that disease and sickness will be spreading. Hallelujah. Nation will rise against nation. All right. Kingdom against what? Kingdom. That will be spread of all type of disease. We for sure know that. And this signals to us that Christ comes very soon. But God does not say that those sickness and disease will consume the whole world and you have nobody to meet when he comes back. Hallelujah. But it's to warn us and keep us in connection with him. When this thing happens, it's not a time to run away from church. It's right to come more committed to church. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a time to be closer to God. Closer to God. To test the faith of a man who he says is committed to God, this is the now. Hallelujah. The faith is in the now. The test of the faith is in the now. Hey, listen carefully. If we've been preaching the gospel of motivation, we've we'll been encouraging people, people are getting excited, raising their hand, I'll be getting happy. Now, in the time where we need to consult the Holy Spirit and ask the Holy Spirit to handle matters that concern the peace of Jerusalem, and we're running away. If everybody stay in your home, don't come over. Then, what God are we serving? God are we serving? Every faith shall be tested. This period. Great men of God open their mouth and talk all sorts of things. And then when it come to when it matters, they ask him, to go to your home and stay. We need to be very careful. Right? Bible says, be careful for nothing. In all things, give thanks. Hallelujah. Everybody say, give thanks. Whatever is going to kill you, is going to kill you. Amen. Whatever is not going to kill you, it's not what? It's not going to kill you. Once you have done your part of being a, of hygiene, of keeping yourself from dirtiness, and touching people anyhow, if you touch people, you sanitize your hand, do what is right. You cannot be running away from life. If we have to be running away from our members, then how do we preach the gospel to them? 
if because of the fear that i'm going to contact coronavirus from you right now okay i get step away from you i can't reach to preach to you then i'm in trouble we are all in trouble the ghost is in trouble then we need to pray that god take out whatever is the spirit that's moving around the whole world causing a virus and causing people to die we are going to pray this money that god will face it and take it out in the name of jesus christ Our members are protected Amen. by the confidence and the boldness the Holy Spirit gives to me. Say, Minister, on this, get the people's faith stayed up. How do we practicalize the gospel we have if not for this time? You mean the sick? Because because the sick is not because the sickness is not pandemic sickness. That's why it's healing it. Healing the, the lame because the lame is easy to heal. That's why it's healing them. Because the, the, the lameness is not contagious. That's why it's healing, healing lameness. So whatever is contagious, God can't take care of it. It's too much for God. Is that what we're saying? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is that what we are saying? Is that what we are saying? Don't get me wrong. I have not said we should not take precautions. But I've said that this is the time to be closer than ever to God. And get, get the message that God is speaking. Not to be running away from God. Hallelujah. Not to be what? Not to run away from God. Little with a heart might be coronavirus. Where is the place of God in this whole matter? For all churches. I was watching a YouTube video. I would say probably news from the CNN. And the particular church in, in, Italy, in Italy, actually, the whole seat was empty. And the pastor was crying as he was speaking. Being interviewed. Really. So, what we need to do is to pack all our belongings and get back home to your tent, O Israel. Where is the God that we serve? Where is the God that we serve? If the virus is killing people, why can't we come and die in the church in God's presence? Let's see what God can do. Let's see the God of virus that can take the God of his people. Amen. Why can't we declare a war? Amen. Declare what? A war. We don't want to declare a war. A war. This time, you could have known what it is. The true church, you could have known this time around. The Modifina church, they will pack things. They will not, they will not. I'm telling you, they go, they're going to be afraid. <laughs> the pastor is going to be afraid. Hallelujah. If you are not genuine, this thing can happen, happen. You're going to be running for your life. Hallelujah. See, you have to get to a stage in your life where you say, if I die, I die. Amen. If I die, I die. As Anna said, I'm going to see the king. I'm going to confront the king and say, what the truth of the matter. If I die, I die. A shepherd need to stand for his congregation. Right? We are all limited, you know. I'm a very weak person. But there's something that's never weak in me is the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's never weak. He kept telling me, you gotta do the right thing. Hallelujah. If I'm gonna take you away, I will take you away. If I'm gonna keep you, I will keep you. You gotta do the right thing. Encourage my children, empower them, get them into prayers. Hallelujah. Get them into prayers. Is it possible to have this particular message stream, stream online? Stream online. But, but, but unfortunately, we couldn't do that because we have not gone into that level. We're going, to record, we're going to put it online. People need to be encouraged. Amen. We need to be encouraged. We got to get a see why we pray to God and the unbeliever has seen us praying and the disease is disappearing in the community. And they say, We are forgetting this issue. This issue is disappearing. The people are evidently. People will come to Christ. They will come to Christ. That's how it works. Why can't we experiment and perform experiment with God? Why can't we undergo the experiment of the gospel? I say, Lord, we are not going to leave you until you take care of us. You didn't promise that we are going to be killed by coronavirus before you come. We need soul to be saved. If the soul that need to be saved are dying, how are we going to preach the gospel and reach them? What do we say to these things? Hallelujah. 
This is not the time I'm explaining any of my executive to be running away and stay in the father's house and mother's house and staying there because of the fear of everything. Even the company didn't say, I bind every organization. They didn't say that. They said, you can stay home if you want to stay home. If you want to be, you can, as soon as no more than 50. Sponsored the uh, group by the university. That's what I read in the email, right? So they understand that people need to worship. So why are you creating fearlessness, really? Hallelujah. If coronavirus is going to meet you inside your father's room or mother's room, it's going to come over there easily. Amen. It's going to come over there easily. Hallelujah. We got to how to we got to learn how to encourage people to trust God. Our generation, we have today, we have no trust for God anymore. We do not have peace. We serve God without peace. We don't know what peace means. Little thing happens, you're already getting scared. You're already getting scared. This got to stop. We got to pray today. Let me tell you again. Why invoke peace? Why are we invoking peace? Why do we want to pray for God to reestablish peace in the midst of God's people? Number one, Christ is the Prince of Peace. That's why. He's the Prince of Peace. Any God that you are serving and is not giving you peace, it's not a God worth serving. Hallelujah. Whatever you are committed to, and it's not giving you peace, it's not what committed to. It's not what committed. Being, not, not what the, it's not what your commitment. God! When, we were, when his prophecy was made in the Old Testament, we were told is the Prince of Peace. And I told that peace is a tranquility of your heart. Amen. When your heart is stable, amen, focused, not misdirected, that is a man who is a winner. Hallelujah. In the midst of storm, his heart is firm. That's a man who is a winner. Some people, some people are very fast in spreading bad news than good news. Because their hearts is instable. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, he said, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Hey, listen. His name shall be called Wonderful. He's a God of wonder. Number one, Counselor. He's a comforter. Right? A multitude of counsel. You can't miss the goal. You can't miss the target. You can't make mistakes. He's a mighty God. Hallelujah. He's an everlasting father. And the one number finally is what? Prince of peace. Why Prince of peace? Because he came to the world. In heaven, they have peace there. We don't need to be invoking peace in heaven. It's a place of peace. But on earth, he need to be a prince of peace on earth because their heart is confused. The devil is thrown into the world. So the people of God, in the midst of challenges and turbulence, they need to have their heart stable, have peace. That therefore is called a prince of peace for those that he will save. Hallelujah. So what's the reward of faithfulness? What's the reward of commitment to God? What's the reward of Christianity? The reward of Christianity is to have enjoy, to have the peace, to enjoy daily. Hallelujah. If we can't enjoy our peace daily, then something is wrong with our commitment to God. Or maybe we should back out of Christianity and look for something else. Hallelujah. The test of God's presence in all things is that peace of God is reigning. If you pray a prayer and you want to see the result of your prayer, the first litmus test of answer prayer is peace. Everybody say peace. If peace runs in your heart. Your heart will be so solemn, calm, you know there is God in this situation. Even when things appear to be very, very calm and wonderful and the outward and you don't have peace in your heart, you know God is not there. Hallelujah. Peace is not absence of turbulence, but it's the presence of tranquility in your heart in the midst of turbulence. Your heart is unshaken. That's by what you see. You are not moved by what we see, but we are moved by what we know of Christ. Hallelujah. Well, what? My people shall be free by the knowledge they have. Amen. My people are what? Gone into bandit because of what? 
Because of what? They are ignorant. They don't have knowledge. Hallelujah. It's not what we see. It's what we know of Christ. We need to invoke that peace to reign everywhere in our life. Number two. Why are we invoking peace today in prayers? Christ gave us peace. Christ what? Gave us peace. Very clear about it. it was, it's not only that he's a prince of peace, but he gave us peace. Remember also that peace is also the fruits of the Holy Spirit. It's a what? Fruit of the why will God include peace as a part of the fruits of the Holy Spirit? It's amazing. God understands that our heart needs to be together. John chapter 14, verse 27. John 14, 27 says, Peace I live with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives to I give to you. Not as the what? The world can't give the peace that you never gonna have. News can't tell us what peace we need to have. The worldly news. What we hear in the news. Information around is not going to determine our peace. Amen. We have our peace that is eternal. God is the determinant of that peace. Hallelujah. Peace is a principle. Amen. It's not a sentiment. It's not what you feel. Hallelujah. It's what you have. Everybody say, what I have. No sentiment. When there is a problem, and they still and that problem is peace and while christ was going to address the storm he said stand still and see the glory of god amen god always loved tranquility the heart of those who stay with him not the heart of have peace the heart can only stay with god when the heart carries peace god doesn't like anxiety asking questions like it tranquility asking questions hallelujah Anxiety. Talk to God in prayers. Hold on, hold on, hold on. He may help me now, help me now, help me now. That's not gonna, that's not, that's not the type of prayers God answer. The type of prayer God answer is a prayer that transfer what God said back to him. So that God can read, can readdress what he said and put himself into action. That's a prayer of peace. Hallelujah. That invoker of what God has said. As a prayer of peace. God can't be moved by too much weeping. Amen. God is moved by his word. Say, I honor my word above my word. My name. You can't call the name of God. Name of God. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Let me know. Me know. And then you forget the principle of God's word. It won't work. Hallelujah. People just go to church and cry in the name of Jesus Christ. Go to church and do our stuff. But when it comes a time like this, they run away. They run away. They, they quit. They go. They go. They move away. It's real. Right? It's real. I want to say this prayer right now. I say, Lord Jesus Christ, whatever is entangling your children, wherever they are right now, disentangle it from them. Take them away from entanglement of fear. Let your peace be restored. Ra robotika saba lento suprokotaha. Whoever is afflicted with coronavirus, we pray for deliverance. We pray for deliverance. You have not said that your children will be consumed by viruses. So that you have nobody to bless anymore. So that you have nobody to take care of. Nobody to have fellowship with. I pray today every spirit of coronavirus. Moving in the community. Let them die. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree death. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet and say the prayer. Rokota prakasapaya. Rokute poko so pikataya. I move by the Holy Ghost to ask you to pray that prayer. Like I say now. Roko pikatakasa. Every spirit of depression that will cause the community to collapse because of one small coronavirus. Wherever it's coming from, I pray. Let them dry out right now. 
Let them die. In the name of we, we put your children under the siege of protection of the Holy Spirit. Siege of protection. No longer will they live by fear of death. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we are declared. Have your seat again. Are you feeling up sense already? Have you seen that? God is here to energize your soul. Amen. To give you strength and energy from within. Hallelujah. You can't go out of God's presence and be regretting. It's an impossibility. See, Jesus was very mindful. When he was flogging those buyers and sellers out, merchandise out, he told them clearly. He said, the house of my father shall be called the house of what? Prayers. Go, one thing is so important to God. Your ability to communicate God in the midst of challenges and where there are no challenges. God loves communication because the communication we have with him is his beauty. It's his praise. Hallelujah. He created us for his glory. For his praise. So when we talk to him, he gets excited about it. Hallelujah. He will see our dependency on him. He loves that. In a time like this, when they see all Christ, they say, oh yeah, I got the attention. But in a time that they went run away, they say, oh really? I tested Abraham. Abraham did not fail. But I tested these people. They all run away. Nobody's crying to me. They all going around looking for drug and medicine that is going to take care of coronavirus. Unfortunately, the researchers have not been able to get a cure. So what do we do now? Run to anywhere. Go get a cure. These people run towards God and cry for help. And God deliver them from their trouble. That should be our portion. Run into God. Not run away. Okay. God is teaching the whole world lesson. Hey. You can try to devise a cure for anything. But if I decide not to introduce new things. That you can't cure. What about that? And I delayed the cure ability after one year later. So what are you going to do? That's what God is saying. That you guys think I'm not going to come back. I'm coming. I'm your Lord, God, Savior of the world. I die for your sin. I can do and undo. Let me give you a taste of what I can do. I'm like, well, I'm freaking out. We're all freaking out. Yeah. Freaking with fears. Hallelujah. Freaking out. What? Fears. The fears. All programming TV is all about coronavirus. Yeah. Even the people that are doing the, uh, the funny uh, home video and all this stuff, it's all about coronavirus. News is, you know, one quarter of the news is for coronavirus. Right. Everything, anywhere you open on the internet, coronavirus all over the place. Why can't Jesus be all over the place? Why can't somebody say, Christian, say, hey guys, Jesus is a killer of Corona. Let's take care of that. Let's pray. What are we doing? You know, we congregate so many people. What can happen is guys begin to spread more because many people contact. No. Hallelujah. I do appreciate that. I don't deny the fact of uh, what I observed that it can spread so pandemically. I understand that. But I also understand that we can also pray to God to help us out in this matter. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, we can. We can. We can. We can. We can. John chapter 14, 27 says, Peace I live with you. My peace I give to you, not anyone else. Not as the world gives, so do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither be afraid. What is the application of peace? Because I have abundance to eat. I have kind of rest. I'm not worried. That's peace. No, that's not peace. Amen. It's because you have a lot of food around you. And you don't have to be hungry. And you think your emotion died down a little bit. I think that's peace. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see people eating good food and they still don't have what? Peace. The food they are eating becoming a problem in their, in their system. Hallelujah. 
Sometimes you go to my well, Lord was educating me. He said, it's not the food that you eat that really preserve your life. It's not that, it's not what, it's that, that's not what give you health, real health, come from me. Hallelujah. But I got to do what I got to do. Amen. Eat what is right. Amen. But you have to understand on the back of that, that is the essence of health, good health. The gift of health is from him. Hallelujah. God can decide to take away and give. Amen. But I convert for total reception of the gift of God in healing. Amen. We call it divine healing. Hallelujah. I love it. Amen. I want to enjoy if you don't like it it's okay you can reject it but for me i love to enjoy divine healing hallelujah amen if the enemy want to challenge you and say okay he's talking about you, i'm not the one that is giving it to myself god wants to give it to me i accept it hallelujah so any demon or devil want to challenge my belief my faith in god for divine healing will die instead hallelujah die instead amen with that instead god loves testimony as long as you keep that testimony and cherish it amen the, the testimony is a slap on the eyes of the devil on the face of it, of satan they don't like testimonies it's it's obviously we overcome it by a word of testimony right by the blood of the lamb that's what we overcome so when they will hear the testimony is angry hallelujah it's what that's why I don't want to brag about uh, divine healing. I, mean, I don't like to brag about it. It's a gift from God. You can also have it for yourself. You can have it. Hallelujah. You can what? You can have it. You can have it. I say, I can have it. But to invoke your peace, your peace must stay. You can't tie your life down to doctor for the rest of your life. Every two, two months you are with doctor. They, pro they diagnose... <laughs> They are diagnosed one thing or the other. This one today, another tomorrow. You even even know the one to pick. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> don't say, my sister. Don't even know the one to pick. And you begin to live in fear of <laughs> prognosis, right? Of doctor. In fear of what doctor will say now next. Uh, sometimes the doctor talk, get information from you, you get information, and they, they determine what's going to be, be your, the future of your health. Hallelujah. But I'd love to give God information about my head. I say, Lord, can you take care of me? See, we cannot totally heal ourselves. We can only try. I have not said you don't go to the doctor. Go to the doctor, examine yourself, do what you need to do. But at the back of it, remember that God is the one that preserves life. Hallelujah. Those that trust in chariot, they go to disappointed. But those that trust in the name of the Lord, they shall never be disappointed. like this in the time to invoke our peace invoke our peace somebody somebody is in their room right now, room right now and they just stay alone they are thinking coronavirus and watching video and i might go to you know, go around and taking you know, masks and you know pricing you know, you know that was i was saying in the tv last time i said i said i said toilet tissue paper uh, there were people who are buying tissue paper massively and the tissue paper is very scarce in stores and even hand sanitizer over the store you know the doctor was saying tissue paper can't protect from coronavirus hallelujah they keep buying tissue paper hand sanitizer is okay but tissue paper what is he going to do you're going to use it to wrap your head and wrap everywhere hallelujah. All right, all right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It is what it is. Amen. It is what? If you go to the store right now, you see the shelf are empty. All food are gone off. That's why we need to pray for the peace of what? Jerusalem. Because it's going to affect us too at the same time. Because there's no food to eat. <laughs> because of this whole thing, we are all in it. Hallelujah. That's why you need to rise up again and rise up on your feet right now and say, Pray God they will put an end to this fear. In the name of Jesus Christ. And the fear in the community will put an end to this fear and trouble that is causing the chefs in stores to be empty. People falling up. Father of light will lead you to stop this virus. I want to hear over the news in the space of two weeks that this whole thing is a 
ended, 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 ended in the name of the Jesus Christ. In the name of the Jesus Christ. In the name of the Jesus Christ. The creator of heavens and the earth. In Jesus' name, we have declared. Have you seen it again? Have you seen it again? Brethren, we need to be confident. We're going to say we have to be confident about the God you are serving. I've gone through stuff in my life that make me feel like collapsing. But the Holy Ghost held me. The Holy Ghost can hold people. Amen. If you can give yourself to the Holy Spirit. If you can give ourselves in the service and commitment to Him. He knows how to. He knows about the game. Amen. He knows how to keep the game for us. And make, make us to become winners. Holy Spirit is statical. Hallelujah. What did I say? It's statical. When they gather, they are trying to plan against you. Holy Ghost has a way of disfiguring the plan. Raising a standard against them like a, like, a, like a what? Like a flood. And turning the whole thing around in your favor. He knows how to do that. He's an expert in doing that. Expert. Everybody say expert. Holy Ghost expert. Holy Ghost expertise. He knows how to do it. He knows how to convince your boss in a matter of two weeks and get everything set to about yourself here. Yeah. He knows how to do that. He knows how to do that. He knows how to do that. I'm looking for visa. I want to see in the next state. He knows how to figure it out. I didn't cry for it. I did not. But God saw the reason why he needed me to be here for this time. He work it out. Amen. And I'm a citizen here. He knows how to work, work it out. He knows your life. He knows your tomorrow. He knows how to figure things out for you. You need to invoke your peace. You need to live a life of peace. Not a life of beggar. Begging the devil and begging the question. Begging the challenges. We can't live our life for trouble. All right? Even though we may be troubled, but we can't live our life for trouble. We are living our life for Christ. Everybody say, I'm living my life for Christ. We've been told in the past when we were very small, say, oh, you know, every day Christians to be fighting war and the trouble and everything. Amen. Who fight the war? The toughest war for us. Jesus. He won the war on the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. But right now what we are doing is claiming. Claiming the what? Victory. Claiming the victory. Claiming the victory. Claiming the victory. What's the time? Yeah. After about five minutes. Hallelujah. Claiming the victory. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Look at it. Long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Why does it bring peace in there? Hallelujah. It's very important. Love, joy, peace. People can see that with joy, but not have peace. They're laughing around Christian, laughing Christian, right? Feel good Christian, but they don't have peace in their heart. Little thing, they're out. If you confront them in the truth, they are out. A Christian without peace. There must be a stage a Christian will get to where you are harassed confrontationally and you stable. You know what you are doing. They sell the book a wise man, a wise as still. But the book a fool, what is it going to be? They will count, count it as a contention against him and it's going to fight you. It's going to turn you to be his enemy. Hallelujah. Our generation is still we're freaking out too much. Particularly the young generation of this situation, of this life, of this present, present age, they freak out very fast. They can wait in patience to ask for the will of God for their life in marriage. They can wait in patience to ask God what they are doing in the political location they are. They are whole manners of war are not like serve, emotionally serving. Whatever is not emotionally serving to them, they run away from it. Any mercy goes to mercy that is not what? Emotionally serving. What does it do? They run away from it. They want, they want to hear the word, wonderful. You are a great God. 
you are doing well, even when you are doing very bad. You are so sweet, you are so cute. All those words. Oh, you are the powerful man. Oh, you are the great. You are doing a great job. That's what I've been hearing from their elementary school. They never hear a word I say, challenge and say, you're doing it wrong. This is the way to do it. When any preacher opens his mouth and tells them this is the way to do it, they, they get scared and run. Where are they running to? The God we are serving, you can't run away from him. If you want to go to heaven, there's no way we can run. Jesus was missing the gospel. At the time, he got provoked in the spirit. He said, Pharisee. He said, Woe unto you. Sometimes there's some negativity sometimes that provoke positivity. You can't create the world without confusion. Before the world could be created, there was what? It was new and void. Go out of confusion. God bring light and peace. Sometimes there's a word that needs to be spoken to your life that will be confused. Confused words that make you to reshuffle and be on your feet. Hallelujah. People who walk, walk with people without challenges, they end up being crippled emotionally, crippled in wisdom, crippled in understanding, crippled in knowledge because they don't walk with people who can challenge them. Little challenge, they freak out. They pack all their belongings and run away. And why we don't have investors? They are money claimers and gift takers. They will suck you dry. Our generation here, you generation, they are sucker dry. What do I call it? Sucker dry. What are they going to get from their pastor? Not what they're going to give. But we are training our time, we are training our childhood on how to give to pastors, how to take care of them. But generation is how they can, what they can get. You can feed them every day. They will say, come and criticize. Say, oh, you know, Pastor Tini, not to give more to us. Hallelujah. When I see turn to be like that, hallelujah. It was not like that. It was not learn of Christ like that. This is not the attitude of this gospel. See what the disciples were going through. They were going through tough time. They were being persecuted. Somebody was being locked up in jail for preaching the gospel. If the generation have such an experience, with their pastors you know what scatter he said take hold of the of the shepherd the sheep will what will scatter you will see them scattering you know what the disciple did they stood in the room and began to cry for peter father deliver peter out oh lord god almighty peter can't stay there for too long god decided to release peter and when the miracle was performed even they themselves they couldn't believe it and the Peter knock at the door say, Who is that? Why are you going there, Rhoda? To go and open the door. What's the point you doing that? Say, ah, I, I, I don't believe. Okay, come over here. And the miracle came. Shake their hand right there while praying. Hallelujah. What our generation doing? It's freaking out when we have coronavirus. That's up on your feet today. Days will go to month, three days fasting and crying to God with soul is up. It's not a joke. If the level we take God, that God will go with us. If we say God is not important to our situation, say, okay, behold, I knock at the door. If you hear my voice, you, you will open the door for me. And then I will come to dine with you. It's about you giving a total surrender. And let God be invited by you, by you. God does not invite himself emotionally. A life principle. Amen. God is God what? Uh, principle. It's the God of love, but the God love is also principle. You know, love is not what you have in marriage and say you expect to just grow by itself. Love is not sentiment or infatuation. Love is a principle. If you are a man married and you don't love your wife by principle, the marriage is going to crash. That your sentimental love will die after about five years. But it is the love by principle that makes you to keep that marriage for life. Amen. No matter what, I will stay with my wife or my husband. That's what we we'll talk about real love. The same way God love too. God love is principle. God needs you to ar 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 get it aroused. Amen. By invoking it. Amen. Invoke your peace today. I say, Lord, I invoke my peace. I will not be a partaker of all the confusion in the community. I will not. I reject confusion in my life. 
In the name of Jesus Christ, I am not a partaker. Turbulence will not get close to my spirit. I am stable in the name of Jesus Christ. I will remain stable in the name of Jesus Christ. No matter what happens, you will keep me in perfect peace because my soul rests on you. I trust in you. Mercy, peace, love be multiplied unto you. That is what your word said. Let my peace be multiplied. Be multiplied. Every other member in this church, in this fellowship, we pray for peace. We pray for peace. We pray for peace. We pray for peace on them. Peace on them. Give them confidence, boldness to serve you, to continue with you. Never giving up on God. No, this is no sickness. We capture any member of this gathering. Everybody will be kept in your as your custody. Everybody will be overwhelmed with your love. Everybody shall be kept. Under the shadow of your wings, I stand here as your oracle, as your representative, and I declare total peace for all your children, total peace and earth for all your children. Nobody will fall sick, nobody shall be afflicted by the virus that is going around the world. In Jesus' name, Father, I thank you this morning. No man obtains anything. Except you have deliberately given it to such. All that we have received today, we say, shall be permanent in our life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for giving your word. Thank you for giving yourself. Thank you for protecting all your children. Thank you for keeping our community. Thank you for throwing away this disease, this virus, this thank you for helping me to die young right now thank you for helping this coronavirus to die young right now thank you for letting this coronavirus to die young right now the proclamation and the news of this coronavirus will die in, a, in, a, in about two weeks will die it will die off in the name of jesus christ thank you father jesus name we have declared have your seat confidently. We're done today. You want to give your offering? Go ahead and give your offering. Give what you can give to God. All right? It's not, uh, you're not to give your tuition. Don't give your house rent. Give from what you have as saving. And remember, this is not a particular fellowship that keep the collecting from people. We are here to encourage you and prepare you for future, train you as a future leader.